Goodbye, Mrs. Cord. As uh, soon as you've delivered Mrs. Cord to her destination, you'll go on to the Boston house. And I'd appreciate it if you'd stay on there. I don't know exactly when I'll be coming up, but whenever I do, I'll be needing a car. But if the uh, arrangements aren't satisfactory, you're free to terminate. I'll have Mr. Kennerly discuss that with you. Yes, madam. Shall I see you to the door? No, that'll be all right. Very good, Miss Mary. You're, well, you're obvious. Now, I like to think that I was never obvious. I push. <laughs> oh, how I pushed, Martin. But I was never obvious. Not this obvious, anyway. Look, Hannah, I am very tired. It's been a day and a half already. <laughs> you know, I'm fascinated with you. With your whole approach. Please, Hannah, I'd like you to leave. You could have gone the other way, you know. You could have been terribly hurt by Martin's death. Confused by all the details of the funeral. Unable to handle the guests at the services. You could have been a poor, shattered, terribly feminine creature. That would have been the smart way to play it, Betty. In fact, you could have had this whole house swarming with people trying to comfort you, trying to help you. As it is, there's nobody here but uh, a couple of Martin's cast-offs. All right. I'm pushing. I'm taking over. And I'm coming on too strong. There now, I've admitted it. Now there's nothing less than said, so now you can leave, Hannah. How much are you dreaming about? Shall I ask the chauffeur to take you out? How many millions? Oh, come now, you must have tried to guess. Oh, do I detect a note of jealousy? No. You see, I know Mr. Payton sent you a check each month. I'm sure that the estate will continue with that policy. I really don't know. But I'm not worried. How much did he send you, Hannah? Enough. Then you are accustomed to big money. Martin always saw to it that I got as much ice cream as I wanted. You humiliated Stephen today. And I'll never forgive you for it. Humiliated him? He was the oldest grandson. He should have made the arrangements. He should have seated the guests. He should have been the man. He should not have been reduced to pacing up and down the foyer of the chapel like a... like a small boy. I phoned Stephen from the Boston Clinic the moment that Martin died. I wanted Stephen to be the first to know so that he could make his own plans, so that it could be his strength, so that he could be the man... Martin Payton is dead. But I'm very much alive. And 
I'm going to enjoy watching you take all the wrong options. Martin's wedding gift to you and Robin? Right. So you rush home and put it on, immediately following the services. <laughs> oh, Betty. You give yourself away. <laughs> 